Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for being with us. Uh, I would uh, reference you uh, first to a Roanoke Times article that was actually a reprint or the same day as the Richmond Times Dispatch uh, about Virginia, our home state. And uh, it says that uh, while most localities in Virginia have three or four plans available, talking about plans that have been approved by the Virginia uh, insurance folks um, to be in the in, in insurance exchange, while most localities in Virginia will have three or four plans available, several localities in southwest Virginia will have only one plan offered. Uh, that certainly wasn't what was contemplated when the bill was passed, was it? That, that there would be areas that would only have one plan, one choice? That wasn't contemplated, yes or no? because we only have limited time. Congressman Griffith, you know as well as I do, there's only been a history of one insurance plan in Southwest Virginia. It will take time to introduce new plan, new plans to rural markets, and that's an example of a rural and, market. And I was surprised that, that you have indicated throughout this that you've heard of isolated incidences where people were laying off or cutting back hours significantly in light of the fact that the Commonwealth of Virginia itself 7,500, according to the Richmond Times-Dispatch, Washington Post article indicates it may be as many as 10,000 uh, Virginia, Commonwealth of Virginia employees uh, are having their hours cut. You wouldn't consider the, in, the Commonwealth of Virginia as an isolated incident, would you? I, I have heard of the state of Virginia, yes, and I, that it would be one of the ones of the isolated incidents I've seen. So up to 10,000 employees that, that are being impacted and are I'll remind you isolated. It's up to 10,000, but I don't think they've taken any action yet. In fact, I Oh, yes, they, they have, ma'am. It is the law of the Commonwealth of Virginia as of July 1. It would have been nice if the administration was going to delay that if they had let folks know before then because they notified after the law took effect in Virginia. And so those employees have already been impacted. And furthermore, it's not just the Commonwealth of Virginia. I have counties in southwest Virginia that also have made some decisions in that regard. And according to a Washington Post article of uh, July 24th, the, talking about the Virginia uh, situation, that is not isolated. They indicate there that a company called Mercer, in that article, which I would recommend to you, has done a survey and estimated that 12 percent of the employers in the United States plan to lay off workers or cut their hours back. And this I is can where we get frustrated. To you an equal number of studies that say quite the opposite. Okay. Well, the Commonwealth of Virginia is not a study, it's a fact. Now, that being said, you indicated earlier that you're willing to talk because I have employers all over southwest Virginia that are concerned, and you indicated to Mr. Kinziger that you would be happy to talk with those employers. Is I'd that also to true for my Absolutely. constituents? Absolutely. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that uh, because it is a big concern. Um, and I will tell you that, you know, we're hearing, I mean, I've heard from one business that does deal with service industry that they are struggling with what they're going to do but one of the things they would have that they might be able to do would be lay off about 12 or 13 employees on one shift that they is their least productive shift but if they laid that shift off they wouldn't be covered because they'd have less than 50 employees so this is not for those of us out in the field on a regular basis and I know you've said you've been out there but you're hearing something completely different from us also if I might ask uh, this question uh, when does the Medicaid maintenance of effort expire for a state that has deferred to a federally facilitated exchange? Will you be issuing further guidance on the MOE as the last guidance was issued before the Supreme Court decision? I, okay, so the exchange and the MOE are two separate issues, All right. right? But there is guidance out there on maintenance of effort, and I'm happy to, to answer any of your questions. Or well, when would that expire for a state that is deferred to the federal exchange? I don't think it is related to the federal exchange, and I don't think the MOE expires per se. So you don't think it'll ever expire? I'm happy to. I'm not sure Perfect what your question is. I understand. Is. All right. Well, we'll get that question to you so you can get us a question in, in writing back on that. If you can give uh, me an example. Yeah. I, I also will tell you that one of the big concerns I have, because in those areas where we have uh, limited uh, health insurance coverage in southwest Virginia, we're also seeing some real stress on our small rural hospitals. Absolutely. And, and I'm very concerned. Some have already indicated they're laying off folks because they're, they're concerned that they won't get enough patients in a particular practice area. And for some of my, my people, that means in, in very critical areas of health care, they're now looking to have to drive an hour and a half to two hours to get the care that they used to be able to get in their hometown. And the folks are saying that that is directly related to uh, some of the aspects of Obamacare. Do you have time to comment on that? You know that I'm very familiar with rural Virginia yes, and issues of access. I think they were there before Obamacare. They, they were there before Obamacare. Unfortunately, the stress from Obamacare is making them worse. I appreciate it and yield back. Gentlemen,